books, books. I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi, readers. Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I'm doing my first book review of 2024, Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. This is my 43rd Stephen King book. And in case you're new here, I am on a journey to read all of Stephen King's books by publication date. So I started with Carrie, and now I am all the way up to Dreamcatcher. Now, full disclosure, I have read Dreamcatcher before. I read it way back in college, so <laughs> 30 years ago. And so I haven't read it since then. So I thought that I remembered this book pretty well. Turns out I did not. And I have very fond memories from reading this book because I do recall that I was in kind of a, a dark place. I was going through something. I went out to do some retail therapy, saw that Stephen King's latest book had come out. Again, this was in the early 2000s. I picked it up. I remember reading it. I remember really enjoying it. I remember laughing at it and finding that it was funny. Upon rereading it, um, I can definitely see that there are some issues with this book. So this is one of those situations where like, this book has a special place in my memory and it holds a special meaning for me, but I recognize that it is not King's best work. So let me dive into that a little bit further. So a quick setup of this book is we have a group of uh, friends, a group of boys, who were friends when they were children, and now they're all adults. They all have their own kind of traumas that they're dealing with. And every year, ever since they were little, they go on this, like, group hunting trip. So now they're all, like, in their 40s with various, again, things going on. They're out in the middle of the woods. They stumble across this mysterious stranger. And basically, they can tell right away that there is something not right with this guy. And it turns into a not only a battle for survival, but a battle of the earth because there are other worldly forces at play here. That's really all you need to know going into it. Now, I kind of feel like this is one of those books where there's like two different parts to it. If you've ever read It by Stephen King, there's like the, you know, the one half of the story that takes place when the kids are younger, and then the other half of the story that takes place when they're older. There's kind of a similar situation here where there are things that happened in the boys' past lives that affect the future, but, but not in the same way. Not in the same way. So let's start with like the world building or the setting of this book. I actually really like it because it kind of takes place in like the deep woods, the main winter. So you really get that like snowy, cold feeling and that like dark feeling of being alone and all that stuff. I really, really liked that stuff. The characters in the book. Now we don't get to know I would say every single character in the um, in the friend group as well as some of the others. But the ones that we do get to know, like, they have really interesting stories. And I know I say this a lot about King, and I'm going to say it again here. King just does such a good job, like, really getting you to know these characters, really getting you to understand, like, who they are, what makes them tick. Now, again, all of these characters have had different experiences in their lives. They're different people, you know. One guy is suffering from a disease. One guy has an old injury that he's dealing with. Like, there's all this different stuff going on, and King just does such a good job, like, really making you connect with these characters. On the flip side of that, there's also multiple villains in this book. There is an otherworldly villain in this book who I think is both horrifying but also kind of funny at the same time. And then there's like a human villain as well because there's a kind of a subplot where like the military gets involved and one of the guys that's like in charge of the military is just an awful person. So both human and non-human villains alike here are really, really, really good villains. 
So what is wrong with this book? What is wrong with it? It's got a good setup. It's got good characters. When it comes to the plot, here's where things get a little off the rails. So without giving away spoilers, in the first half of this book, there is a situation where there are, let's say, foreign objects and foreign creatures that come out of people's bodies, <laughs> that come out of people's bodies. That's all I'll say about it. But it's it's really weird. It's very bizarre. And honestly, I feel like once you read the whole book, like that whole part was kind of unnecessary. Like it's kind of unnecessary for human beings to be, uh, I'm just going to say pooping out, uh, you know, alien creatures. Like, that doesn't have anything to do with, like, the plot of the story. So it's very random, and I feel like maybe he was trying to be shocking there, but, like, it, it's kind of silly, and it kind of doesn't work. What does work for me, and again, this is just for me, is that one of the aliens ends up, like, taking over one of the characters' bodies. So you have a lot of this dialogue going on where, like, the guy is still conscious in his own mind, but the alien is controlling his body. And I think their interactions and their banter and their struggle over control, that's, like, my favorite part of the story. But that doesn't happen until, like, the back half. In my mind, in my memory, I thought that that was, like, the majority of the book, but it turns out it's actually not the majority of the book. The majority of the book is like the 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 poop weasels, I guess, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Um, I think they do actually call them shit weasels in the story. Like, I think they actually use that term. But I like the 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 mental back and forth and like the mind battle that's going on. That's the stuff I like. It's just, unfortunately, that's a much smaller part of the book than I remembered it being. So yeah, there's a lot of bizarre stuff that goes on in this book. Not all of it makes sense. I don't think all of it is relevant to the story. But again, like, I still like this book. I still like this book because, again, it got me through a dark time and I find it really funny at parts and I don't know if it's intended to be funny, but for example, um, there is a scene where um, when the alien is taking over that guy's body, he's like yelling at him to eat bacon and I went through a phase where I was like obsessed with bacon. So that part in particular, like I really, really love because I love bacon or I used to love bacon, not so much anymore. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, there are certain things in here that I think were specifically meaningful to me. I don't know that they'd be that meaningful to anyone else, but because they were to me, like, I kind of love this book. I recognize that it is not King's best work, and I recognize that it definitely has issues, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I still enjoy it. So that is all for me today. Enough of my uh, rambling. So now I want to know from you, have you ever read Dreamcatcher? Did you like it as much as I did? <laughs> did you think it was weird? And do you have any other books that you know in your head aren't that good, but you love them anyway? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. Swiper and I would really appreciate it. And I'll be back soon with more books and more furry friends. All right, everyone. Happy reading.